Hello, everyone. I'll wait for some of you to connect to audio. Um, hello, and welcome to the Brooklyn Rails 655th New Social Environment. Today's NSE will be simultaneously interpreted in to Chinese. Please be sure to select your language and how you would like to listen by clicking interpretation in the menu bar at the bottom of your screen. I'm Raven, the Special Programs Associate here at The Rail, and I have the pleasure and privilege of being your MC today for a conversation featuring Yanwa Zhou, Jiao Xingtao, and Paul Gladstone. And we're thrilled to welcome poet Jen Sung here to close today's program. Before we get started, the Brooklyn Rail acknowledges Black Lives Matter and that here in New York, we are on Lenape Hoking, the land unceded land and waters of the Wappinger, Canarsie, Muncie, and Lenny Lenape people of the Delaware Nation and Shinnecock Indian Nation. We recognize land acknowledgments are not a replacement for actual necessary decolonial work, but a reminder of place, of the legacies of dispossession and enslavement that sustained and enriched the stolen land that we are speaking from. And now to introduce today's guests and hosts, an associate prof professor at Chishuan Fine Arts Institute, Yanwa Zhou, is, received her PhD from the University of Arizona in 2021. Her research interests embrace contemporary Chinese art and visual culture, global socially engaged art and rural studies. Her research appears in peer reviewed journals, such as the Journal of Contemporary Chinese Art, China Information and others. Contemporary artist, Jiao Jingtao, is also the professor of, and vice president of Sichuan Fine Arts Institute. Since 2018, he has been leading various socially engaged rural art projects in Southwest China. His most recent work as an artist is Conceptual, a comment on the consumerist excesses of today's society. And our host, award-winning critical theorist and cultural historian, Paul Gladstone is the inaugural Judith Nielsen Chair Professor of Contemporary Art at the University of New South Wales and a distinguished affiliate of the UK-China Humanities Alliance. He is an inaugural co-editor of the book series, Contemporary East Asian Visual Cultures, Societies and Politics, and was founding principal editor of the Journal of Contemporary Chinese Art. And now to pass it over to you, Paul. Many thanks, Raven, and, and thanks indeed for those very kind introductions. Um, before we get started, I'd also like to echo uh, Raven's thoughts. Black lives do matter, and I am speaking from unceded Gadigal land in Sydney. Um, those of you who may have been following this mini series of panels uh, about um, East Asian uh, or global art and aesthetics, as part of the new social environment series, we'll know that we've already touched on um, socially engaged art and socialist realism in China on a, on a few occasions. And today we're going to extend that discussion, I suppose, into uh, a greater depth. Um, listeners may be, um, viewers may be familiar, will almost certainly be familiar with the legacy of socialist realism in China, particularly do it during the Maoist period. It's become an iconic part of, of the way um, China is thought of and introduced, uh, not least in the media, and is also evident in the legacy of contemporary Chinese art. I think we're all familiar with things like political pop in China, which make use of imagery taken from China's revolutionary period. However, perhaps people are perhaps less familiar with the fact that the legacy of socialist realism continues in different ways in relation to socially engaged art in contemporary China, which is a, um, a major fundamental part of artistic expression there today. So we're very honored to have um, two speakers that are, are deeply involved in that, uh, that movement in China. And I'm going to pass over to Yanhua, who's, who's gonna give us a kind of context um, for socially engaged art in China and its relationship to social, the legacies of socialist realism. And then Zhao is going to give his take on that and also its connection to his involvement with artistic practice and the promotion of socially engaged art in China. So Yanhua, over to you. Thank you, thank you, Paul. And thank you, Brinker Rio, for organizing these wonderful and interesting discussions. Um, um, my name is Yan Hua Zhou. I'm an associate professor at Sichuan Fine Arts Institute.
Institute. So today I'm going to talk about. Uh, Today I'm gonna talk about socially engaged the art and the legacies the, and the socialist legacies. Uh, um, okay, let me share my screen. Uh, Let's move on. So over the past few decades, socially engaged art has emerged as an important art movement of Chinese contemporary art. Such practices have belied continued faith in the market-driven logic, and furthermore, artists have expanded their interventions into society. Most of these analysis of the Chinese socially engaged art contextualize social, uh, social engagement within the contemporary Western democratic system, which narrows the significance of uh, this term. So my presentation today aims to take China as an example to demonstrate a reconceptualization of socially in sorry, socially engaged the art uh, by addressing the issue of a socialist legacies. I will trace the history of the socialist legacies and explore how contemporary artists transform the socialist legacies in their contemporary socially engaged art practices. So in China, <clears throat> social engagement has its very real implication of Chinese revolutionary culture. The history of socially engaged art can be traced back to the early 20th century when social engagement of art was first advocated by the left-wing intellectuals. In 1931, the movement of popular literature and art was launched by, um, um, by Chu Tiubai, uh, one of the Chinese left-wing theorists. So after this theory of popularization, uh, after the, the uh, this movement, the theory of a popularization was circulated around the left wing circles. The method of the popularization as a China left wing writer league advocate is, is like here, as you can see, the league should be open to the masses and we should try our best to carry out the transformation. The most urgent task at the present is to popularize literature and art to agitate and organize mass struggles by means of a revolutionary mass workers, such as war posters, um, communications, lectures, and the storytelling. So landing the theory of popularization into practice, proletarian art and the drama were the specific art practices that evolved from the theory. So proletarian art, I choose a woodcut movement, uh, woodcut, uh, new woodcut as a representative of proletarian art. Um, influenced by German expressionism, artists turned the traditional woodcut into the new style. Here are um, just two new woodprints by artist Li Hua. One is a famous one called Raw China, uh, and on the right hand is the one called Arise. Li Hua enlarged the black and the white construct, strengthened the shadow, exaggerates the figure's shape, and highlight the conflict of a composition right here. So, uh, and also the artist choose the uh, realistic themes to highlight the narratives of the image, showing the hatred of war, hunger, and suffering. Since the 1930s, the new woodcut movement was integrated into the cultural practice of uh, um, the League of Left-Wing Artists, advocating a leftist political mission that is opposing the taste of bourgeois and a propagating proletarian culture. Um, for the proletarian drama in August of the 1930s, the League of Left-Wing Dramatists was founded in Shanghai and it has a initial goal of performing for the workers and assisting the worker in organized blue collar trope, uh, which is an amateur self-organized art trope. 
At that time, Russian revolutionary performance had been introduced in China, and it, it insisted on the collectivism of a theater and anti-hierarchical participation by attempting to create the unity, unity of action between actors and the audience. The so sound of them encouraged the use of the pop uh, the public space by, uh, for example, like per, per performing in squares, streets, factors, schools. So the actors and the play, uh, play writers believe that this in situ performance provided the masses with a direct sense of a sight, and they would be more effective in organizing the masses of people. As a strategy of institutional critique, here we can see that uh, either proletarian art uh, or drama, they challenge the both institutional settings of elite art and, and the authoritarianism of nationalist government. However, they had not been internalized into the socialist context, cultural context of China until the outbreak of the Sino-Japanese war. Um, Yanua, yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Howard, our interpreter, is in the English channel. Howard, do you mind switching to the Chinese channel? Thank you. Great. Thank you, Yanhua. Can I go on right now? Yes, perfect. Just wanted okay. to make sure that happened so you didn't get yeah. it there. Okay, thank you so much. So um, in a, a Sino-Japanese war, um, Yang'an, uh, which is a rural based area in the northwest of China, provided an ide uh, idealistic refugee for the left young uh, intellectuals. However, as we know right now uh, today, that when the intellectuals arrived, they would have suddenly found that their dream was another story. In the spring of 2042, uh, sorry, in the spring of 1942, Mao Zedong published his famous uh, speech, uh, which is called the Talks at the Yang'an Forum on Literature and Art. For Mao, the purpose of the speech is to completely reverse the dominant value of intellectuals and systematically rebuild the cultural leadership of the Communist Party. In this first speech, which is on May the 2nd, um, Mao raised the issue of a stand of revolutionary literature and art that is keeping the stand of the party, uh, keeping to party spirit and party uh, policy. Mao found that the audience in Yang'an were very different from those in Shanghai and the nationalist controlled area because the audience in the base area were workers, peasants, soldiers, and the revolutionary colors. In his second talk, which is on May the 20, uh, 23rd, Mao pronounced that um, it was the task of the writers and the artists to popularize their products and the raise the standard of the people. The talks actually established the two standards of art literature production. First, it, uh, it advocated that uh, art and the literature should integrate in the theory of a popularization um, and which should uh, be highly controlled by the party's literature and art institution. And the second is that um, uh, art and the literature should work for the masses and it should be led by the communist party. It is worth noting that the year after the Yan Forum on Literature and Art, Mao Zedong's article decisions on the leadership method uh, for the Commun Chinese Communist Central Committee was published the June 4th issue of the Liberation Daily. In this article, Mao popularized his theory of a mass line. So as he claimed there, uh, here, in all the work of about our party, the correct leadership must come from the masses and go to the masses. So what does that mean? So actually, um, mass line promote, um, um, po uh, promoted the working method for Chinese communist cutters. The mass line actually, it, it portrayed the two-way interactions between the party and the masses. So on the one hand, the 
Communist Party leaders should collect the scattered views from the uh, uh, the masses of Chinese people. But on the other hand, they should motivate the masses by um, turning those views into systematic positions and experimental policies. Under the guideline of the talks, our style that was felt formed in the left wing movement was profoundly transformed into the Yang'an style. In the early days of the Yang'an period, the works brought to the countryside were greatly influenced by the German expressionism, um, as you can see on the left hand side, uh, the Li Hua's work, which emphasized the shadow and the three dimensional pictorial effects. However, uh, peasants, they did not understand that visual vocabularies. They were confused with the shadows on the characters' uh, faces and thought it was like a ghost um, with yin and yang faces, like black and white faces. That the artist had to modify the technique for the pictorial pur uh, purpose, practical purpose to uh, which their work was put. Let's take Gu Yuan's work as an example. Compared to the left wing woodcut, Gu Yuan's work, which is on the right hand side, uh, were visually different. Um, the shade has been uh, moved to highlight the flatness of each visual figure, uh, uh, and each visual figure were, which were uh, depicted in an extremely outline, a simple outline. The shape was decorated and the composition did not experience or obey the uh, perspective rules. In addition to the visual practices, revolutionary tropes will also played an important role in encouraging mass participation. The most significant drama reform was the intervention, reinvention of the younger dance, which is uh, like a very traditional uh, peasants dance when they celebrate their harvest a day. Um, in Yang'an, a series of a new struggle young girl was, were created, which systematically reformed the old young girl. Uh, like the old erotic gestures and the lap dances were submitted by heroic the stories of a patriarch service to the nation. From a series of institutionalizing steps in Yang'an, uh, China left wing culture was fundamentally transformed as another taste. Uh, it is institutionalized on the one hand and of institutional critique on the other hand. So in another word, um, um, this is a kind of, I, I call it like an institutionalized avant-garde. Um, this is because it contains avant-garde motif of mass participation and reject the cultural elitism and authoritarianism. And simultaneously, it was institutionalized because the avant-garde factors were manipulated by the institution of the Chinese Communist Party. In 1949, when the People's Republic of China was founded, the main purpose of art production was invite, uh, invite the masses to participate in the socialist state building. To do so, a number of in, uh, institutions were set to establish the order of all art productions, uh, evaluations, and uh, distributions, and uh, uh, which shaped the uh, ideology apparatus of the new country. So um, this institution, I, I've just listed uh, several institutions right here. Uh, we can see that like the Chinese Artist Association, which is uh, still here today, uh, the Journal of the People's Fine Arts, which changed the name of a fine arts in the still the official, um, official uh, art journal in China today, and the National Arts uh, Exhibition, which is uh, still today as a, uh, uh, advocating the mainstream uh, Chinese communist uh, um, uh, artistic style. So. <clears throat> Establish the institution, establish the institutional settings. The Chinese Communist Party started to regularize several art genres, which they thought could advocate the socialist culture of the new country. 
in addition to the socialist realism, which was the most important and the mainstream art genre circulated in the uh, People's Republic of China, uh, because we are quite familiar with it. Um, so um, I think I, I would mention uh, other art movement that I, I think that I think could better illustrate how social engagement of art was uh, settled down in this socialist period. I use an umbrella term, mass art, to name these art practices. One is a Huxian peasant painting. Uh, which is a painting, uh, it is a painting style which was developed in the Huxian County in a campaign of a great leap forward and focused on the countryside uh, uh, and it became national wide known in the 19, 1970s. Um, why I mentioned that, um, because there are just two features of a Huxian painting, which I think could be the resources for us to rethink participation today. So first, it, is the, it established an amateur style. Uh, that means peasants become artists rather than the materials of objects or artistic, uh, of artistic creation. They were invited to create their own works under the arti artist guidelines. And second, it encouraged the, the collective working method, including collective authorship and the collaborations in the production process, during which collective identity was asserted. Similar to Hu Xian painting, red god posters in the Cultural Revolution uh, was another example of being, uh, of being created by the, by the long professionals collectively. So here on the right uh, is a photo illustrate how artists paint um, collectively. Now, um, let me conclude the uh, socialist legacy of art social engagement in China. So first one is a mass participation, which means the Chinese Communist Party adopted the mass line strategy to motivate the masses to participate in social a socialist revolution and the state building. And the second one is institutionalization, which means the initial avant-garde gestures such as going to the masses, anti-hierarchical participation, emerging art and life practices were fundamentally institutionalized as a party propaganda strategy and art production, evaluating and the distribution uh, and also the uh, uh, arts pro uh, production evaluation and the distribution were highly institutionalized. So following the two characteristics, contemporary socially engaged art in China um, demonstrated uh, like the two features that could be considered the socialist legacy. So one I would argue is that working in and for the institution. In 2017, uh, in 2017, Chinese President Xi Jinping launched a national campaign called the Rural Revitalization at the 19th National Congress of the Communist Party of China. It forms the governmental discourses of a rural reconstruction through art, highlighting the significance of artistic engagement in this national campaign. The pressure of the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party's discourse, pushed several independent socially engaged art projects to be institutionalized. For example, like, um, like the Qingtian Plan, uh, which, was, uh, uh, which was launched in 2015 by artist, contemporary artist Zhu Yan in the rural village in Guangdong. The purpose of this plan was initially to use contemporary art to find the last of all customs and to promote local industry. To do so, the artists organized the volunteers and the professionals to clean the uh, flagstones road, barriers of uh, water and electricity pipelines. He also remodeled all the residential houses and improved the public space and the sanitary facilities for residential areas. Um, although contemporary art is all, all uh, is often considered a critique of the institution, 
these contemporary art practices in Qingtian attempted to embed themselves into the national campaign of rural re uh, uh, reconstruction through art. They are applying for fundings from the Shunde County government and the local officials, which was very interesting. They have been very interested in contemporary art um, and uh, uh, engaging in the countryside because they believe that the Qingtian plan is a good case for the communist party building project. Here, um, we can see that like the bulletin board on, in one of the project sites is a common uh, Chinese Communist Party building propaganda board. So in this board, uh, the title is guided by the party building uh, and the diversity building and the diversify uh, participation to boost the Qingtian's rural revitalization. The local government aimed to change the original one-way administrative order and created a consensus through interactive dialogue among the government, uh, universities, social organizations, and the villagers. Here we can see how um, the uh, art project and the local government collaborate tightly. The government provides the financial and the political support for the plan for the projects. And meanwhile, the project offers the radical contemporary art resources and the volunteers. And today, today it forms the uh, basic um, format of rural reconstruction through art. Um, so uh, the second feature of how socialist legacy was adopted in contemporary socially engaged art is what I argue is uh, transforming and appropriating, appropriating the socialist strategies. As we know that since the Long March project, many socially engaged art in contemporary China intent, uh, intended to transform and appropriate the socialist legacies in the art pro in the art practices by naming the project after the commune, for example, like the Bishan commune, um, and cooperatives like the Yangdeng Art Cooperatives. Regarding the art strategies, mutual aid, cooperation, mass participation, and the mass line have been um, used in investigating the local, uh, investigating the local, knowing the uh, residents' needs, and organizing people. But um, in my opinion, reactivating um, and appropriating those socialist legacies. Uh, in this social, uh, contemporary socially engaged art do not mean a, um, a, a thorough return to the art practices in institutional settings like the, what artists did in revolutionary and socialist China. Rather, they um, demonstrate how to rebuild human relations by approaching socialist factors in the neoliberal liberal area, which I think um, is a very uh, creative uh, gestures of for the Chinese com uh, Chinese contemporary artists uh, to uh, rethink about the participation. So um, that's my presentation, and I think uh, Professor Jiao will give, give us more detail about how artists engage in the specific site. Um, thank you so much. Um, uh, for your listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Many thanks, Yanhua. I think that that really did set the scene extremely well in connecting uh, the earlier part of the, or the, or the middle and early part of the 20th century to some things that are going on around visually, visual culture and art and social engagement in China today. And uh, as you suggest, uh, we're now going to move on to uh, Zhao, who's going to deepen our understanding of this by talking about some specific um, examples of socially engaged art in China today that he has been directly involved with. Zhao, over to you. I'm from Chongqing. Sichuan Fine Arts Institute. 
I want to share with you my topic today. My apologies, some technical problems. Uh, so what I wanted to share with you today relates to a project that lasted 10 years. It's called the Yangdeng Art Co-op. Yeah, Tongzi uh, was uh, named uh, Yelang Kingdom. And he was the, uh, there was uh, the place where Li Bai was exiled. Uh, it was one of the 100 poverty stricken uh, counties. In 2022, I initiated and also supported by many uh, villagers and citizens and uh, artists to establish this, this long lasting term uh, project uh, that last, lasted until today. Relative to cities, the rural areas have a pretty gap, pretty big gap in politics, economy, and it's a very poverty stricken area. Contrary to our imagination, this place has a very cheap materials, but rich in materials. And uh, it faces uh, many, a lot of pressures for environmentally. So the small scale mines that used to be the support of the local economy has collapsed, which has caused problems in the local economy. So the young people just like uh, uh, take a kind of a happy-go-lucky attitude towards life. And Yangdeng is a reflection of uh, the majority of the rural areas. So it is in a kind of black area in the area of uh, art. This weakness reflects kind of uh, like a passive attitude. And we have uh, like uh, initiated projects like uh, the uh, uh, carpenter area, carpenter projects, and uh, Feng Daohua Art Museum and Xi Ping Wu Museum and Xiao Chun Tang. And in, in, we have it's also established the broadcasting stations uh, on the uh, in the schools, on the river, on the bridges, and we have also established the Yangdeng Twelve Sceneries project. So in the first project, we have the uh, uh, country carpenter, and we have uh, uh, organized the carpenters to participate in the uh, art creation to create some kind of uh, like exceptional art. And uh, one of them created uh, some kind of uh, like a uh, uh, cabinet, uh, which are, so the uh, cabinets only would only hold the uh, person. So that furniture becomes very popular among the kids. And uh, so on the left side, they have uh, like reduced the size by two by half. There are also carpenters who have completed the projects by themselves. So there's like a carving, wood carvings. So these are kind of uh, surprising. And we used to build heroes and great people, but nobody has uh, ever ever created a, uh, an enemy like this. And this carpenter also became a very important artist in the Yangdong Co-op. And also covered with the uh, local restaurants 
to uh, re transform the local restaurant into a Feng Douhua museum. And it combines with their uh, Douhua, like a uh, food. And it also recreated four uh, like uh, tabletops. These are very uh, common daily use, uh, items like uh, cigarettes, chopsticks, and uh, keys to motorcycles. So we painted them. And when it opened, many people came to the restaurant. When they wanted to, to pick up the chopsticks, they realized that uh, the chopsticks were fixed, that they could not pick them up. And some people wanted to like uh, to pick up the cigarettes, but it was actually turned out to be uh, wood carving. So these are all like uh, fake items from wood carvings. So we created a kind of imaginary realistic uh, world. And after half a year, when, when I went back to the township, so only the cigarette was remained because it was uh, crashed by a motorcycle. I asked the boss why because it was very difficult to clean the tables when you clean them. So that's why they removed them. So everybody, all artists would think that's such a loss, uh, but for us, but when life comes back to change art, so that's the art, that's the value that art should have in our life. So, in our creation and we created works that are not practical in our daily lives <clears throat> and the artist creation also affected by the inspiration from life so we actually see like a proxy policeman made uh, on the road so it's like the uh, scarecrow used by farmers in the field uh, in Yangdong. So there was a big flood that uh, flooded many houses. And we thought we wanted to make a, a kind of, so we made, uh, we purchased such a like proxy glass policeman and we put it on the like uh, wasteland on the dam. So the people uh, recognized this. They thought this was a good idea and it became a, like a very popular site. So this uh, dam was uh, blown, uh, blown up. Lu Yunxia, an artist in the co-op, cooperated with the farmer they made uh, they into different shapes. So they sold them by the shape rather than by the weight. So this made the uh, selling of the vegetables very interesting. So they responded to the demands from life and they emerged the uh, realistic life with art. In 2018, in the summer, we came across this uh, resident with Li Anwei, we lived there for three to 40, we chatted with them for about 10 hours. And we chatted with them about uh, his uh, like uh, longings, his missing his uh, ancestors and his, and he made, he gave us the, this picture. And Li Anwei, then we just eventually made this picture. It was about seven to eight centimeters. It was enlarged by 80 times. It was uh, put on the wall of uh, his house. And the people like passers by would uh, look at it. And Yang Wei was uh, very satisfied with this. And he held his uh, grandson 
So that's the Li Yanwei. So on this uh, picture, the second row, the one with the hat, that was him when he was, uh, when this picture was taken. So it was uh, like uh, enlarged and presented as a mural. So it uh, reflects the, the history of the family. <clears throat> This uh, group picture, we <coughs> they, they put this uh, uh, like a shelf and the villagers would be able to come here to pick whatever they want. And you take it after you take a picture with the thing you pick up. So everybody is uh, waiting to stand there. <coughs> And gradually the pictures took over the shelf. So everybody was happy to see their neighbors on the shelf. <coughs> In the 12 sceneries of Yangdeng, we asked people to like uh, paint the the uh, pictures, the sceneries they wanted to paint. <coughs> Everybody needs to tell the story of the picture they paint. It can be a real story, can also be something you create. Then we ask the, the villagers, <coughs> the people in the township to vote. And based on their vote, we decided on the 12 sceneries. And we made them into <coughs> postcards and then send them to the merchants on the, in the township to sell the postcards. So when we, uh, sometimes we create a uh, really uh, like a uh, reality out of uh, imaginary. <coughs> this is the postcard we have created. <coughs> we wanted to increase communication among the residents through the pictures and the art. And the people in the township started to tr try to find their own stories and to form their collective memory. <coughs> The next the bench story about there is a uh, this uh, bridge. There are two. One is a cement bridge, the other one is a wood bridge, and that's where like people would uh, gather to communicate in summer. And we created uh, the benches and to prevent them from being stolen. So one of the legs was uh, cut short to be mounted on the uh, so since this is only suitable for such a, like a, a stage, it cannot will not be stolen. <coughs> and then we uh, tie the benches to with the rail of the bridge, so that makes it a popular place for the village for the residents. This is uh, what we created uh, for the children. It's kind of humorous and it's also like fun for the children. <laughs> also like you see the carpenter. So the Ko Kai Hong was the one that created uh, the enemies. He was very good with his hand handyman. He was uh, never received any real education. He created a lot of uh, wood carvings. In 2017, we uh, made our first uh, exhibition. So that's all from his understanding of the things. So this is a one-legged woman, and this is a, like a, a man upside down. <coughs> So that was made from uh, like a uh, like a, a discarded uh, chair from the local court. So 
So this is what he wrote on his uh, clipboard, representing his uh, determination and his uh, inspiration and his aspiration. So we made this as a kind of uh, like a, a flag or uh, on, on the uh, street. <laughs> A banner on the street. So this helps them to establish their own memory and becomes a part of their society and also strengthen the mutual tie. So in this, the artists were impressed us. One was the, the man, uh, the boss, Xie Xiaochun. He called his the period painting. <coughs> Another one is the mechanic, uh, auto mechanic. He wanted to uh, de like uh, decorate himself as uh, Sun Wukong, the uh, like household name in the legendary uh, story. And Wang Jing was a local clerk and he lost the one of his legs and his, that changed his life and use different material to use different use uh, processes. And he registered his own account as a, like a, a beautiful leg brother. Through the revival, revitalization of the rural areas, uh, this uh, project has lasted uh, 10 years. So we also like continue that uh, happy-go-lucky attitude towards life, but we cooperate with the villagers. We create a new joints among the people to inspire their imagination, to inspire their memory of their families and their life. We <coughs> created projects with the local artists. That's our hope and that's our uh, intention. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Jiao, many thanks indeed. Um, I think that takes us into a much kind of closer uh, engagement with some of the projects and, and some of the thinking that um, Yanhua introduced us to in her talk. Um, I just like, before we go on, I just like to echo Chloe's message in the uh, in the chat if you have any questions do feel entirely free to put them to the q a and um, as chloe said the, there'll be a virtual mic that we can pass or we can um, we can relay your questions for you but before we get to that i'd just like to kind of ask a couple of questions of our panelists just to, to explore some of these themes a little further and perhaps i could start with yanhua um, Perhaps as we've seen here, one of the things we're looking at it isn't necessar wouldn't necessarily be interpreted uh, directly, certainly at first glance, always as art. Uh, we're looking at various forms of visual culture, um, design, uh, graphic design, um, objects, all linked by a certain playfulness. So perhaps we're looking at uh, the relationship between a kind of an aestheticized life or a playful life uh, and, and society. And, and just one more thing to add to that, that there's a long-standing tradition in China going back hundreds, thousands of years of the aesthetic being having a relationship to the ethical, what is good and what is right and what is kind of socially constructed. Uh, perhaps you could say a little bit about that, Yanhua. Um, thanks, Paul, for this question. So, um, so for the ethical aspect of uh, uh, of how the ethical aspect of art uh, uh, was e was transformed or utilized by the artist uh, artist in their um, project, I think. Um, uh, I think, yeah, you're right. The, um, uh, as China has a, its long history to uh, transform their philosophical thinking, and so everything into the ethical, uh, ethical thinking. Um, so that I think artists, they have this kind of intention with they, 
do, doing their uh, work of art uh, in a specific society, especially doing socially engaged art. And this, uh, this kind of a thinking, I think, uh, uh, was, uh, uh, is, in, uh, is fundamentally embedded in their uh, in a way of doing something, in a way, uh, in a way of thinking. So, uh, so we, uh, so this is why uh, when I uh, when I communicate with some artists and when I uh, doing some interviews, and I realized that the Chinese artists they uh, we, we, they, they they don't have to uh, like the uh, artists in American or in the Europe, and um, they have a kind of at how to transform uh, the aesthetics into, uh, they have the kind of a um, process of a transform uh, the aesthetics into the ethics. But for the Chinese artists, they do, they do not have this kind of uh, uh, a process. So they, they, they just, uh, uh, they just uh, uh, think aesthetics in an ethical way directly. Uh, <laughs> so I, yeah, so I think that's a very, uh, interesting part uh, 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 for the Chinese artist, and I think that's uh, that's long uh, that's long history uh, of China. That's called Chinese culture. Uh, I think uh, it was fundamentally uh, embedded into the artist way of making art. So it's it is very uh, it is it, it, it seems to be easier for them to think about how to make the connection between art and the society. Um, yeah, it's also the Confucius uh, <laughs> way of, yeah, it's Confucius way of thinking. So, um, so yeah, it, it's very interesting when uh, I, I know that the, uh, there, there are some of the uh, sayings that uh, in China, uh, there is no, uh, every art is uh, socially engaged. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you cannot find that art that was not socially engaged. Yeah, it, and I think that's very, um, that, that, that's very uh, special and that, that was deeply related to the Chinese uh, uh, traditional culture, yeah. Yeah, I, do, I, I think when um, viewers who are not familiar with Chinese culture are looking at traditional Chinese ink and brush landscape painting going back hundreds and thousands of years. It's important to recognize that this is embedded in a, in a Confucian culture, a Confucian literati culture, and that it's immediately socially engaged. It's all about society and governance, even, even though it's presented in, a, in the modern world, certainly outside of China, as this kind of aestheticized practice. So it's very important that when we look at this subject or Chinese art in general, we're not looking at things just through a kind of westernized lens. We mustn't use, completely use the yardstick of, of socially engaged art in liberal democratic contexts to look at what's going on mm -hmm. in here. And I was fortunate, I went to Fujian and I saw some of these socially engaged projects at first hand. And I think they, 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 they have an interesting impact on society. So Zhao, could I, could I ask you a question now? Um, I, I think it, Internationally, questions, you know, there have, have been, has been criticism of socially engaged art, um, not least in liberal, Western liberal democratic contexts, as not really fulfilling its ambitions, that, that it claims, it has vaulting claims about social transformation and social critique that aren't always uh, obvious or measurable that the claims don't match the actual practice. What about in China though? You've shown us some very interesting kind of firsthand projects in China. Could, perhaps you could say a little bit more about how these aesthetic or aestheticized engagement, how they've changed these rural societies and how is measurement of that change, is some kind of assessment of that change part of the project? Uh, 
，可以这样理解这个问题吗 ？So is my understanding correct that you wanted to ask the engagement? Can't hear the interpretation. You need to switch to the English channel. If you hear me, if you're in the English channel, Paul, you'll be able to hear the. Yeah, you need to yeah. switch to the English channel. No, I'm in the I'm in in the English channel. Okay. Can you hear me okay now? I can. Yeah. Hear so, please carry on. Thank you. Ah, okay. Okay, can you hear? So, am I correct in understanding your question as to mean, uh, like, uh, you wanted to know whether engagement art in China will affect? Can they hear me? Ah, no. Oh, we're in this. 都可以，都可以听见。Yes, what kind of impact does it have, and and is measuring or assessing that impact part of the project? So I will answer your question based on my understanding. First, in China, the rural areas are very different from the rural areas outside China. So the difference lies in the fact that the tribute to the long. History of China and also the short、uh, history of socialism. So, I believe that、uh, the problem faced by rural areas in China is not directly、uh, related to aesthetics. Just as、uh, Zhou Yanhua mentioned, socialism from the top to the bottom participation. That has lasted over fifty, sixty years. So that's what we want to do. What we need to do is to, from the bottom to the top, participation. Therefore, so the Yangdan Co-op. Together with other rural revitalization areas, the difference of our project lies in the fact that we are not related to the government. The, there is no relation with the local government. We are not connected with the local government. We were only connected with the everyone interested in art. And we discuss with them directly, participate and cooperate with them directly. I've seen this. I'm sorry. Uh, 不容易的一件事儿 Yeah, such a relationship is no easy job in China. No. <laughs> <coughs> So how art will change the rural areas? The most important thing for us is the art will bring some kind of a surprise, and through playfulness and games, we can change their lives. Then they become they begin to reflect on their own family history, to establish their own.、Uh, Desire to express themselves, and such、uh, desires,、uh, revitalization, or to walk out of their daily lives. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, I've seen this firsthand myself in Fujian, and I think you're absolutely right. These kind of projects do instill playfulness into rural societies. 
and they do bring bring people together. You know, it's a focal point for the society, which is cross generational. Um, but does it, in your experience, does it provoke questioning among rural societies about the nature of, of the way they live? Does it, does it instill a desire to, to make even greater change? Mm. So as a matter of fact, in China, from the city to every corner, everybody has the desire to change their own lives. So therefore, whether it is a material desire or their mental desire, we need to make a distinction between the two. So they can feel their own desire for spiritual and uh, art. And they also have certain doubt about this desire because it's useless. It does not bring you anything material. So if there are 10 or 20 people here that start to realize this will take, bring them something equally important as a material asset then that realize the purpose of art. Thank you, that, that, those are very uh, enlightening answers. And I think also speak to some something that Yan Hua said was, was making clear that there are blurry boundaries in Chinese culture and language between ideas of the aesthetic and art and morality and playfulness and desire um, and spirituality that um, uh, are nece very necessary to understand, to try and grasp what's going on in these projects and the longer history of Chinese visual culture. Chloe, do we have any questions from our from our audience? Um, so we have one question. Oh, sorry, Raven. It's okay. <laughs> um, so we have a question from Cheng Tan, and I'm gonna ask it on her behalf. Um, so she said, um, "Hi, I am Cheng Tan. I'd like to ask Mr. Zhao how he has been exhibiting the works and activities Yang Ding." in art institutions, which is always a challenge for socially engaged art. And then she said, thanks for the wonderful talk. Uh, it is very difficult to exhibit them in museums or institutions because it lasted over 10 years, our method is to establish our own public account. In the public account, we would discuss our uh, like progress in our project. And our main focus is on publication of books. Thanks, Cheng and Zhao, for your answer. And um, our next question is um, actually from my colleague, Chloe. So. Um, Zhao, you've mostly answered my question already, but my question had to do with humor and how humor plays a role in your work and in, um, in engaging communities around uh, art projects. That's a very good question. This is also a question that uh, uh, feature that uh, everybody participating or everybody 
So this uh, humor is very important. I believe that uh, art has a very important characteristic. In our Yangdan, we have an experience. When we walk on the riverside, we walk by somebody that was uh, like a sunning her hot pepper and wanted her to make it into a circle, the pepper. So we try to make it as round as possible. And then we divide it into different colors, uh, the yellow in the middle and uh, the red will be in the outer circle. They didn't know why we were doing that, but uh, they were not doing anything anyways. They spent over an hour doing this and her reflection reaction was kind of, I asked her how she re reacted, but she kept uh, smiling. The smiling made me realize it was very special. So we were not uh, like talk show host. We were not uh, like a sh doing humor show or anything, but we were doing something meaningless, but uh, it uh, brought her smile and a sense of humor to her so that that would be reflected in her daily life. I wanted uh, the every work of mine to be filled with humor. A great question, Chloe. Perhaps I could add to that just by saying that the modern word for humor in Chinese, humor, is a kind of homophone. Well, it is a homophone which was used in the 1920s to translate Western ideas of humor. So we, we need to be careful here about assuming some sort of cultural similarity between ideas. Western ideas of humor as amusement aren't quite the same as longstanding Chinese ideas of humor. Uh, the, the term humor goes back into Confucian culture and is actually associated with Confucian ink and brush landscape painting which from a, certainly from a Western point of view does not look humorous. <laughs> However, what it signifies is a certain kind of balance of mind, a certain kind of humor. And, and uh, as Zhao said, a uselessness, which is humorous, which brings good humor to, to, to society. So I think again, it's imp and, and this is exactly what Zhao has been talking about that. I think this, this does pertain to a kind of a careful understanding of differences of meaning and translations of meaning, and also meaning embedded in traditional Chinese, Chinese culture, which perhaps isn't quite as obvious to, to Western audiences. Raven, do we have any other questions? Um, no, I believe that's it for today. Well, uh, that brings us very close to our sort of completion point. So I'll just say a couple of words and then we'll we'll move on if that's okay. Look, thanks to our speakers. I think it was hugely enlightening and I hope it, it, it has been for our audience. But I think what this tells us is that we need to think very carefully about categorizing things like socially engaged art, that we just see it from, from a single or, 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 or limited cultural perspectives. I think this also raises some very important questions about the way we look at more familiar Chinese co contemporary artists and, and the way that they fit into internationally recognized ways of production and, and showing. And that this isn't the whole story about contemporary art and aesthetics related to China. And, and hopefully this encourages our audience to go and look a bit further than the Ai Weiwei's of this world. Raven, over to you. Uh, oh. Oh, sorry, sorry, Yanwei, please. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just add one more thing? Uh, yes. I think that, yeah, um, Professor Zhao's actually, his Yangdan Art Cooperatives was very special uh, among, uh, amongst the, uh, uh, the, the, social, uh, the rural reconstruction through art. And he also, he, he don't agree with that his work project were rural reconstruction through art. But I was I, I would say that in uh, recent, especially after the 2018, uh, the Chinese kind of the art, uh, socially engaged art in the countryside of China uh, intended to be more like um, uh, uh, more like engaging in the uh, national campaign of a rural revitalization. Yeah. But 
among them, Zhao's project was very special because he uh, he is always pursuing the bottom up um, um, process of engaging in a community. But but we we do have uh, some uh, more and more project like they 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 they, they doing a, a kind of a bottom up. Uh, engaging uh, within the community, so uh, uh, I think that's very uh, so that 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 makes Jell's works very special and very unique. Yeah. Yes, I do apologize for not bringing you in there anyway, but I think that's a very important point. We're not look at looking at a monolithic thing here in terms of social engagement uh, in China, certainly not in relation to rural communities. And that there are differences and nuances or even kind of significant differences in the kind of approaches that are going on here. So thank you very much for making that point. Raven, over to you now. Okay, thank you guys so much. That was a lovely conversation. Um, we have a tradition here at the rail to end all of our events with a poetry reading. And today we're thrilled to welcome Jen Sung. The daughter of Chinese immigrants, Jun Sung grew up in New Jersey and now resides in Northern California. An alum of Tin House and Rana, her writing has appeared in the Washington Post, The Audacity, Jellyfish Review, and others. She received her MFA in creative writing from UC Davis, and her memoir in progress is A Reckoning of Myth, Migration, and Memory. Welcome, Jin. Thank you for having me. Uh, 谢谢你们邀请我. I want to thank Howard, you're in English again. I'm sorry. Howard, you're speaking in the English translation again. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Thank you to the Brooklyn Rail uh, for inviting me here. And thank you to the speakers for such an illuminating talk. I really enjoyed that. I brought two. Um, last stories for your enjoyment. And I'm gonna start with the first one. Feeding time. The moon is half full and you're packing the only suitcase you own. Well, it's your ma's, but she doesn't know. The exterior is robin's egg blue with a hard shell and hairline white cracks zigzagging like lightning. Your neck cranes towards the soft blue interior pockets and you inhale cedar mothballs. You remember near the end, Amma spent days in the humid bedroom with lemon walls you shared, barely lifting her eyelids, her hollow cheeks warned of death. Sometimes her arms shot up skyward and she shouted at you, go, in a gruff baritone of a five-star general. Where would you go, you wondered? You only knew the mildewed walls of your railroad apartment, where you, eldest of three girls, spooned out ginger rice porridge to squabbling mouths, while Ma was hunched over a singer hand crank at Old Taylor's shop with her weary eyes and prayerful hands. You only knew a wandering dirt path from your squat two-story building to a one-room school to a makeshift hospital where your father doled out medicinal tinctures and hope to children who lost their toes, fingers, even eyeballs in a forgotten war's minefield. You only knew neglected contours of the island you called home. You only knew a decaying cemetery where bones were buried without headstones. You imagined a life where you didn't answer to anyone's prayers not your mother's, not your grandmother's, not your ancestors, by marrying into riches with gold and jade bowls and plum cheeked babies. But you never dared to map an escape route. Your mother sinks day by day deeper into her grief ridden husk, shoulders collapsing into dust, disappearing. You can't remember the last time she sang. Her voice, soft and cooing, used to fill your heart with music. Sunlight danced on windowsills. Your little hands waved to passing skylarks. Laughter and song once over filled your home. You plucked purple blazing stars for her black hair, 
flowing past her waist and she lifted you toward the clouds. You flew with the larks. Then the bombs fell from the sky and air raid sirens replaced her singing. Moonlight illuminates a gold locket Amma gave you on your 10th birthday. You remember how she looked at you, her dark eyes narrowing to crescents and you squirmed under her gaze. Promise you will take it when you go, she said. You nodded. She saw the future. Promise. You fingered the curves of the locket, wishing you had listened to her old woman ramblings, taking her growls more gravely. It was only after she died on your 17th birthday, you heard a chorus of loud voices. It was as if she had passed them to you when she crossed over the riverbed. They chanted, demanded, banged on buffalo high drums, willing you to go, go, go. You tried to block out their angry voices by shouting back and wailing, no, no, no. Alas, it was no use. The dead live inside your chest walls now. You packed everything you stole from neighbor Lee's kitchen. You waited until she went to the temple in red paper. Mandarins, pomegranates, shrimp balls, oyster mushrooms, longevity noodles, sweet rice cakes, and whole carp with eyeballs for good luck. An intoxicating feast. You kiss the suitcase closed. Ma would not approve. You cannot save everyone. At the end of the month, a hungry ghost moon will rise. Their cries shake and shatter your eardrums. Their stubborn knocking pounds against your chest. You must go. Your time, Amma commands. You must make your way to the moon. You must feed our hungry ghosts. Okay, I have one more for you. This is a little bit of a different tone. A little more playful. Year of the Fire Pig, February 1st, 2022. Dear Xiaopeng, too many years have passed, decades now. You probably not recognize me. Old man with shiny head, Lao Tou. Less hair, more belly fat. Intermittent fasting, no good. Weak eyes, fixed cataracts. Hearing fine. That mean I can't turn down dial on wife, always nagging me. Memory fading. Too bad they don't sell memory pills at Costco. Remember our last conversation? You're the fire pig. You, bragging about how it was your turn to kill the pig for your family's New Year's feast. You claimed you could do it much swifter than your brother. Your eyes, shiny like flashlights. Your hands going swish swoosh through the air, master butcher wielding an imaginary knife. I was always hungry back then, rumbling belly. Our cupboards bare, yours full of treats, persimmons, crackers, baozi. I taste your excitement, winner, winner. Every time you beat me in basketball, I replay my mistakes at night in bed. Too short, too slow, too stupid. My old man told me, stick to books. His belt was loud. He said, your father, show off, greedy loudmouth. He think it more honorable lose his earnings at the opium den, slippery like a silverfish. It didn't matter. There was no way out of the village for me. On New Year's Eve, I snuck over, cloaked in darkness, and through the wood ax I stole from Fat Leo over your fence. The chickens scattered, an owl warned of a raid. No one home, you all still at your cousin's party. The pig awoke with the first blow, shrieking like a train whistle. Every hair on my body electrified. I used all my might, striking over and over at the heart. Blood, intestines, skin bits spewing everywhere. But it took a long time for that stupid pig to die. After what felt like hours, I was covered in blood and mud, smelled like urine and death, a foul victory, hollow inside. Yes, it was me, your best friend. I killed your pig. Me, jealous of your fast feet, your good smelling kitchen, your clean future in the capital. 
your family move away after that. You know, say goodbye. I heard your father was frightened of mafia revenge hunting since a band of murderers had pillaged your feast. Something died in me too. I quit basketball. No competition, no fun anymore. Studied till the old man died and then studied some more until finally earned a bus ticket to the big city. He never imagined I'd get golden ticket to America. My pantry is stocked, but I still think about those lean years. Sometimes I still hear the pig's shrieks in my dreams, pitiful, sorry squeals. Anyway, I saved you from years of torture. Happy New Year, old friend. Year of the tiger. Don't worry. No tigers to hunt anymore. Dabo. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen, for that beautiful reading. And thank you, Jiao and Paul and Yanla, for um, an amazing conversation. Um, here, we'd also like to thank the Terra Foundation for sponsoring our NSC program and making these daily conversations possible and for their support of our growing archive. You can view today's event and our full archive on the Rails YouTube channel. Over the past 22 years, the Brooklyn Rails provided a platform for arts, culture, and politics through our monthly publication and public events like here in our daily NSC. And please check the chat for a link to donate to support our writers, editors, and operations here at the Rail. And join us tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a conversation with Martha Martha Atienza, Yi Ilan, and Jessamine Bart Batario on the event of their shows at the Silverlands, New York. And we conclude with a poetry reading from KTP Benito. And you can now turn on your microphones and say goodbye as you guys leave. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Hi, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank thank you thank Jen. You. Thank you, Paul. Ja. Thank you. Lovely yeah. things, everyone. And lovely days or mornings, wherever you yeah. are. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye. you, Howard. Thanks, Howard. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye.